guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Jordan Ari here, and today we're gonna to take a look inside my camera bag. These are all the things that I keep with me on any given shoot, and some things that really just need to be taken out of my bag because I don't even really use them on shoots. So we're gonna be cleaning this bag out as well as going through it. So here is my handy dandy camera bag. It's a USA gear bag. I got it from Amazon. I can't remember how much it costs, but the link to this bag as well as everything that's inside will be down below. You guys will be able to go to my Amazon store and purchase any of these items that you like. So to start, we're gonna go through this top part of the bag. That's where I have like the most stuff. Most of my miscellaneous stuff comes from this section. So to start out, we have this handy dandy camera strap. I really like it because of the little zippers on it. I like to keep additional memory cards in there when I'm on a shoot. But this is a nice little camera swing. It has a little soft piece to rest on your shoulders and it allows you to have like a little sling for your camera. Can you guys see? Yeah. So I like to keep my camera on here and that's how I carry my camera around through shoots. I also have this camera wrist strap. I used to use this wrist strap all the time. I stopped using it though because it was starting to put a lot of weight on my wrist when I was on shoots. So instead I just use the sling that I just showed you guys. But I still keep this in my bag because it's small, lightweight, and if I ever have a need for it or I forget to put the sling in my bag, I still have something for backup. So I would use this as backup. And then I have one more <laughs> accessory for how I hold my camera. And this is a belt strap. So essentially, I keep a belt in my bag. It would be better if I had a camera belt, but I don't have one. And essentially, this the belt goes through this little loop here. And then I clip this bottom piece. I twist it into the bottom of my camera. And then I hook my camera onto my waist. And I really use this whenever I am working with a second camera and I'll hold the second camera on my waist and then I'll have my camera either on that sling or on my wrist strap. Next we have my memory card cases. So I like to keep all of my memory cards in here. I do a really bad job keeping them in here. As you can see, I only have three in here right now. I have like 20 memory cards, but there's only three in here right now. The goal is that I keep the empty ones in here so that if I'm ever on a shoot, I know I can pull from here and pop in a fresh, clean memory card and it'll be ready to use. So I always keep this in my bag. Next, I have a portable phone charger. This is a pocket juice. I got it from Best Buy and this thing is amazing game changer i take it with me on all my trips on my shoots it gives my phone five full charges five i just think that's so crazy it does take a really really long time to fill up or to fully charge from zero but it's worth the like three days it takes to charge because it gives you so many battery lives so i always keep this handy next we have this sprayer thing. I don't know what it is called, but it's kind of like a little air pump and I use it to clean off my camera sensor or dust off any dust that is sitting on my lens. It just acts as a little way to give your lens a little clean, your camera a little clean. So I love to use this. I keep this with me at all times. I also have some batteries in here. These are Amazon basic batteries. I honestly don't recommend these batteries. These are not the kind of batteries that self dump. So you want to get batteries that want, if you are using them and you don't use their full charge, they when you go to put them back on the charger, they will dump on their own. I don't know if that makes sense, but those are the kind of batteries you want. I won't link these ones. I'll link the ones that you should have down below. They're not expensive. I just haven't had a need to purchase them yet. These I bought initially when I bought my first um, Speedlight, Speedlight. And it didn't really work well for my Speedlight. It caused the recycle times to be even slower. So I would recommend different batteries. I'm going to link them below, like I said. But I do use these for like my trigger and things like that because 
they still work they still come in handy next i have this tiffin filter this is a tiffin black pro mist filter is it gonna show you okay yeah this is a tiffin black pro mist filter it is a 7, 77 millimeter so it fits on two of my lenses my 24 to 70 and my 70 to 200 we'll show you those in a few minutes uh, but I really like this filter. It gives my pictures a little blur. That way I don't have to do the blur motion in post. Filters are really cool because they can add like a orange tint or a red tint or a star effect on your pictures without you having to do it in post. It's just literally, I'll open it. It is just a little filter that screws on top of your lens. Oh. So it just literally looks like this. Yeah, so it just screws on top of your lens like, I'll show you guys in a minute. <laughs> Next, we will go into the larger part of the bag. Let's zip up the top. So we just went through this top part, and I really like this bag. It has a lot of pockets. Oh, it's so heavy. Okay. So we also have this pocket on the side. This is really nice. I just keep like my chapstick and stuff in here. There's nothing in there right now. I took my chapstick out. And then it has this front part where you can also store your memory cards. I have one memory card in there. I <laughs> didn't know that. Um, but I can store my memory cards in this little compartment. One other thing that is typically in that top pouch of the memory card, which isn't in there now because I'm using it to film, is I can show you the cord this here orange cord and if you're not familiar with tethering this is a tether cord this cord allows you to see me through the lens and me to see me right here so i'm looking at myself over here and i'm looking at you over here so it allows my computer to talk to my camera so that i can shoot remotely and film remotely all that good jazz and then one other thing that i typically have is this SD hard this SD this solid state hard drive it is a one terabyte by SanDisk and I live for this thing I keep all of my work that I'm currently working on on this solid state drive solid state drives are better because they don't have any moving parts inside and therefore they are less likely to break so I had a regular hard drive I don't know what they're called I had a hard drive with the moving parts and it crashed on me because the read write broke inside of it. So I was kind of SOL because it's very expensive to get them fixed. And yeah, so I invested in one of these and this has been a game changer. Love this thing. So now we're going into the big part of the bag. And the first thing that I'm going to pull out are my two speed lights. So this is a Godox TT600 speed light. This is the first ever speed light I purchased. And honestly, it works, it gets the job done, but it is not my favorite because it has a very slow recycle time. Recycle times are important whenever you're shooting events where you have to capture the moments that are happening really quickly. I think it's like a five second recycle time, something crazy, it's so slow. Um, yeah, so I don't really use this anymore, but I do keep it on hand because in studio, it can work with my other lights as an additional light. And I just would have to shoot a little bit slower. But in times like that, I can shoot a little slower versus a wedding where I need things to move really fast. This just does not work, work for me. So I do have another speed light. And it is Young Nuo, I think. I don't know how to pronounce it, honestly. But it's a YN uh, 560 IV, so four. And I got this little speed light. Someone gave this to me. So I work with a photographer. He was like a mentor to me. And I was on shoot with him, and my speed light just wasn't keeping up. And he gave me this one. So I actually like this one a lot. The only thing I like about the Godox brand, and I could get a better Godox flash, is that the Godox brand works with my other lights because I have Flashpoint Godox lights. So this one triggers with them automatically. This one I would have to slave or have to purchase an additional trigger to use this with my other lights. 
So that's the only downfall for me. It just doesn't work well within my set, but if I'm just using it for events, it works beautifully. I actually love this, uh, especially with the good recyclable, uh, the batteries that give it a better recycle time. So I really like this speed light. I would recommend this one over the TT600. Is that what it was? Yes, the TT600. So I have those two speed lights. I also have this Gorilla Tripod, Joby, I think it's called a Gorilla Tripod. I just use it for my Canon T6i whenever I'm doing little videos that I never ever post. Yeah, I just kind of use this to keep it kind of stable. It kind of works, but it's just nice to have a little additional tripod thing. Yeah. So next we have my trigger. I always keep my trigger in my bag for some reason, even when I'm not using my lights. But this is an R2 Flashpoint trigger. I said I do have the Flashpoint Godox lights. So I have this trigger that works with them and it would really work well with my Godox um, speed light as well. So these two would pair together. Next I have this little piece of fabric. It's just like an eyeglass cleaner, but I use it to clean my lenses. So I always keep this in my bag. I have my lenses and the first lens I would typically talk about is my 50 millimeter 1.8 but honestly I'm shooting with it right now so I can't really show you if I'm shooting with it. Um, I do have another camera that I could be shooting with my Canon T6i but it's not great in low light and right now we have a really low light situation. I tried to film earlier and uh, yeah it was just all bad so now we're working with a low light situation. So I'm shooting with the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens love this lens and yeah it's my number one recommended lens to, to new photographers especially uh it's really inexpensive i was looking on facebook market for random things earlier and i saw it as resale for i think 70 dollars. so i'm sure you can talk someone down to like 50 or 60 bucks for that lens and i purchased it new for 100 dollars a couple years ago great lens always comes in handy the second lens i purchased was this one right here. It is a 24 to 70 2.8 lens. And this was my favorite lens. When I was using my Canon T6i, my crop sensor, this was my go-to lens. I tried using the 70 to 200 on that lens and it just didn't work out well. So if you have a crop sensor and you're looking for an upgrade from your 50 millimeter, this is my recommendation. Love this lens, loved it with my crop sensor. I don't use it as much now that I am full frame and that I have the, 20, uh, the 70 to 200 lens, but still um, a very solid lens even if you are full frame and you just want something with a little zoom capability. I love this lens. And you wanna get something with wider angles. This is a great lens for that as well. So that lens was, I think I bought it for 800 and this is a version one. Uh, I think I bought it, yes, used for $800 version one. It's, some people swear by getting the newest versions of lenses, but you really don't have to. That's my personal opinion. Like you, you don't have to get the newest version. Not much has changed unless like one has stabilization and one doesn't. I'm always going to tell you get one with image stabilization, but version one has st image stabilization. So we were good there. Next lens is the 85 millimeter lens. I purchased this lens just because I was feeling like I needed to have it. I don't know. I, I got it and I hated it. I hated it for so long. But last month I started using this lens for portraits and beauty shots and I absolutely love it. It's beautiful. It gives me such beautiful crisp shots and I've been using it more and more lately. This is the 85 millimeter 1.8 lens and it is Canon. All of my lenses are Canon brand. I don't have any other brand, not for any other reason. I just never have invested in other brands. I don't know, I just haven't seen the need. And then last but not least, I have my baby, I can kiss you. I love this lens. This is a 70 to 200 2.8 lens. This is the big boy. This is the money maker. Oh my gosh. I love everything about this lens. Shooting at 2.8 at 200 millimeters gives you the creamiest backgrounds, the most beautiful compression. It's like, 
it's beautiful. I love it. This has become my favorite lens. From the moment I started shooting with this, with full frame, I fell in love. I hated it on my crop sensor, but on full frame, I fell in love. So I recommend this to anyone who has a full frame camera because this is just my baby. So those are all my lenses. That's pretty much all that's in my kit other than the camera that we are now filming on, which is a 5D Mark IV. So that's what's in my camera bag. That's what I have on almost every shoe. I will be taking out these uh, speed lights because I don't do much event work. I don't do much photography that requires me to have a speed light. I just wanted to show you guys that they're part of my kit and sometimes they end up in my bag, but for the most part, they're not in there because it just makes my bag heavier than it already is. Don't need anything else weighing me down. So yeah, that's all that's in my bag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and comment down below and let me know what's in your camera bag. What's your favorite thing that you cannot leave without, that you cannot live without in your camera bag? Comment down below, give this video a thumbs up, and check out some of my other videos. I can't wait to see you guys in my next one. Until next time, peace.